Welcome to the Tea Time Podcast, where it's all about taking a few healthy minutes each day just for you, with your host, Sharissa Bradley. Hello, and welcome back to another episode. On today's episode, we are going to be talking about stress. Dun, dun, dun. Do you ever have one of those moments where those stupid quote things like the, I don't know, fortune cookie sayings like finally make sense to you and you're like, oh my gosh, this was so simple. Why didn't I get it before? Um, Anyways, I was thinking about that because I recently watched this like funny little movie and there were all these little inspirational cat posters everywhere. Like, if you believe it, you will achieve it and all of these things. And it made me think about the all those sayings that there are for stress, right? Like stress, you can only control your own response and you can't control other people, only what your reaction is. And, you know, life is going to be how life is, but you can, I don't know, there's like so many, they're all, I don't know, pretty much the same basic, basic understanding. But the point is that every now and then, one of those little sayings, hits like a light bulb moment and you're like, oh my gosh, now I totally understand what that means. And for me recently, uh, within the last few months, I started thinking about stress in this way and started having these light bulb moments about those, those silly little stress comments and about how we can't control all the other people. We can only control our reaction. And I always thought that that meant like, okay, if I I don't react to the crazy person in front of me, then that means I'm controlling my reaction. And that's just, it wasn't enough. It didn't make any sense to me. Like, okay, I cannot punch someone in the face. That's, I mean, I learned that in preschool. It's hard to do as an adult. It's hard to like keep yourself at that level. But sometimes, sometimes it makes sense what the saying is, right? So we stress only can, can, you can only control the response, your response. And I've been thinking about this a lot. I read this book, uh, it was called Forward Facing Trauma Therapy. And it was all about how stress in our body is this response. And I was thinking like, okay, response again, response like physical response. I'm not like yelling at somebody when they're yelling at me, but it actually means our internal responses. So whether or not our body feels threatened by the situation or not. So if we're stressed or worried about money or kids or job or car or whatever it is, that stress state or that state of worry, that constant like, oh, what am I going to do? That's actually causing a physiological stress response in your body. So it's actually turning on and off certain processes in your body. Like for instance, when you're in that state of stress, It's also called the fight or flight response. Uh, You're not digesting your food properly. You're not able to sleep or rest. Uh, Your eyes are going to be dilated. Your blood is going to be pumping faster. The oxygen in your body is going to be coming more quickly because your body is preparing itself to fight or flee or freeze. Just like, ah, what am I going to do? So that's happening in our body when we get stressed out. So when someone comes at you or they're upset with you or you're worried or you're stressed about a promotion or you're stressed about a meeting, it doesn't matter. Any of those things, you're driving to work, you're late for work, there's an accident on the freeway, all of that stress is seen exactly the same way in the body. These exact same responses turn on no matter what. So if we're getting really worried, we're getting really worked up, those stress responses are turned on in our body. And this is what that little saying means that you can only control your own response. And actually you can, you can control your stress response. Now I get it. You're like, ah, but I'm like so worried and I can't just like stop worrying. I get it. I totally get it. And anytime somebody says to me when I'm stressed out, like, oh, you just have to like control your stress and you'll be fine. Um, No, that's just like not how it works. But we can learn techniques and learn ways to manage the stress responses in our bodies. 
And if there's nothing that we can do in our external circum- circumstances, so you can't cut back at work, you can't sleep more hours, you can't drive a new way to work to cut out the traffic, like you can't change any of those things, there are actually ways that you can give your body things that will help you adapt to the stress. So there's adaptogenic, adaptogenic herbs that are really good for if you're constantly stressed out. You can take these herbs like ashwagandha and rhodiola and um, other ones I can't think of off the top of my head. But there's a lot of oh magnesium and some of the minerals. These kinds of things will help your body to manage the stress response. So it's actually this like chemical thing that's going on in your body. It's not just all in your head. I'm so stressed out. I'm so worried. When you're in that state of mind that like, ah, help me, your body is actually under attack too. And it is feeling that stress and it is feeling those hormones and it is feeling cortisol and it is feeling adrenaline and it is surging through your body and your heart is racing faster. And these things are actually happening. And when we finally decide to calm down all of those hormones, all of that stress, all of that's still stuck in the body and it has to be detoxed and it has to be processed out. So Most of it's going to come out in our stress. And I don't mean like stress is like a, sorry, in our sweat. I don't mean stress is like this physiological, I mean, uh, psychological thing. I mean, it's a physiological thing. It's, It's actually chemical reactions in your body that are happening, that are being released. And it's a it's actually real, like real reaction. So like when you sweat and you got that like salty sweat, that's mostly minerals coming out of your body and the water that's in your body. Mostly that is what's coming out, but it's also bound to toxins and hormones and chemicals and other things like that that are stuck in our bodies. So this is why that last episode on movement was so important, because we got to do something to move all of this out. And once we think, start thinking of stress as this physical thing that's happening inside of us and not just this mental thing that's happening in our brain. It's not. It's not isolated there. It's going everywhere in the body. People who have more stress and are more chronically stressed are more likely to develop autoimmune disease, cancer, uh, more susceptible to colds, more uh, susceptible to immune disorders, more susceptible to heart disease, death, joint pain, arthritis, On days that I'm extremely stressed out or holding on to a lot of anger, a lot of tension, the next day my body is actually sore from trying to get it all out. So we're having physical body responses when we're having all that mental chaos. So if we can't do anything to change the outside or to change the chatter or to change the, you know, the job or the spouse or whatever it is that's causing us to have these responses in our body, the only thing we can change, here I am sounding like the fortune cookie, is our reaction. I can't even say it with a straight face. Not a, not our reaction to the situation though, and not the way we say things or the way we respond to what's happening in the environment, but the way our physical body is responding. So we, I was recently told that we only have an emotional state. So an emotional state like sad, anger, fear, it only lasts 30 seconds, or I'm sorry, 90 seconds in the body, 90 seconds, a minute and a half, which means that every time you recycle that thought, like if you're mad for five minutes and you're recycling that thought, it means that you're reminding yourself about the thing that you're angry about. Have you ever gotten kind of caught off guard when you're in the middle of an argument? This happens to my husband and I all the time and it is so frustrating because sometimes you just want to be mad for like an hour, like leave me alone. I'm going to slam doors and like break dishes because I want to be mad for an hour. And then like we both hear something funny or like we watch a comedy skit or like there's some funny video on YouTube that we both catch on whatever and we both start laughing. And then like you can't still be in a fight if you're laughing with someone, right? It just lets it go. So that means that we can forget these states. We can get out of these cycles of bad, sad, mad thoughts and control that actual response in our body. And this is huge. This is huge, huge. Because if you can help yourself to alleviate some of the stress response, not the not the fact that there's stress going on outside, but the fact that there's stress going on inside and turmoil and like a freaking like snowstorm in there of like, oh, I'm mad 
and stressed and scared and I don't have enough money to pay the bills. Like all of that stuff that you're constantly reminding yourself of. If you can stop some of those loops, holy crap, it cuts back on disease, on pain, on autoimmunity, on cancer, on energy, on ability to get things done, on your mood, your motivation. There's a million things or more, including all the processes inside of your body, your ability to digest food, your ability to um, really assimilate all of the nutrients that you're putting in your body. If you're eating like a killer diet and you're like just killing it, like, I mean, best, healthiest, greenest greens, pasture raised meat, and like all the things, you're taking the herbs, you're taking the ashwagandha, you're taking the CBD, or you know, doing whatever it is that makes you feel good, but you're constantly stressed out and feeling that like internal snowstorm, that like blizzard of emotions all the time, none of that good stuff is going to stick for you. It's not going to hold tight. It's not going to be useful. Because remember, if your body's in a constant state of fear and stress and anxiety, it's not digesting or assimilating any of those nutrients. So no matter how hard you try to get all that good stuff in, you're still going to be struggling with healing and actually feeling better. Um, As an example of this, I have an all-star client. She is just absolutely incredible, does everything I've told her to do, and has had some success, has lost a little bit of weight, but recently has been getting like more and more tired and more and more worn out and and gaining weight instead of losing weight, even though she's doing everything else right. And when we got to sit down and talk to each other and kind of troubleshoot, she was really stressed about the job and the home and the money and the and the retirement and all of these things. And really, seriously, that's the only thing that was holding her back in her health journey. So it's a matter now of getting under that under control and managing that and and maybe in that moment of really like really stressful thinking, think, you know, take a couple of deep breaths and feel like I know what I'm doing and everything is going to be okay because everything is always okay. Um, and and really feeling like, I got this, I'm doing good. And that's going to really help immensely, immensely, immensely. So stress Yes, it may come from the outside. We may be feeling it from the outside. There's pressure coming in from the outside. But all those feelings that we're feeling, the stomach, the headache, the just like all over exhaustion, all of that is coming from the inside. And all of that is actually under our control. So there's a lot of things you can do to help yourself out. Again, if you can't eliminate any of those external stressors, start with working on the inside. Start looking, okay, well, can I manage my my physiological response, my chemical hormone response any better? Or is there anything I can do that will help benefit my hormones, like taking some of these adaptogenic herbs that will support adrenal glands, support the HPA, hypothalamus, pituitary axis, the thyroid, all of these organs that are helping to supply our body energy and helping us to get up during the day and and get through our day and keep us motivated. So if we're taxing those hormones all the time and we're taxing those organs all the time and we're in that chronic stress state, We have to know that there's a way out of it, and the way out of it is to really be thinking about how you're reacting to it and how you're allowing your body to respond to those stressors. And for me, this is a major, major practice for me, and and I definitely get, you know, a fork in my spokes all the time, head over front of the bike. Like, I... 100% get in those spiral moments of, oh my gosh, I'm so stressed. I'm so worried. What's going to happen? And it takes me a little while. And sometimes I have to kind of sit in that fear for a little bit. And when I come out of it and realize like, okay, everything is okay. Um, My life has always worked out the way it needed to work out. Even those like crazy things that have happened have always been a blessing in disguise. So I can manage my responses a little bit better take a couple deep breaths, realize that emotional state doesn't last very long, and I can stop it at any point by telling myself it's not as big of a deal as I think it is. But 
don't rush yourself and don't push yourself because sometimes sitting in it and being stressed is okay for a little bit. Just don't let it last so long that it's detrimenting your health in some way. Um, I did that. I taxed my adrenal glands after graduate school. I was a complete wreck. That was one of the things that took me into the doctor's office in the first place was that I had no energy and no stamina and no ability to get anything done. And I was literally sleeping all day long because I had let my body get so stressed and so anxious and stored with so much um, chemical and hormone toxicity that I just couldn't function anymore. And I was forced to sit back and make some real changes in my life. And I don't want you to get to that point. So start paying attention now anytime you get really like stressed anxious mad at a situation and sit back and think like is this something i need to be mad about is there something i can do to change it if there's nothing i can do to change it can i let it go um those kind of things and i'm sorry to have been my little you know fortune cookie today but sometimes you got to share the moment when you have a light bulb and i hope you guys enjoyed this one thank you so much for sharing your tea time with me i'll see you next week Thank you for spending your tea time with us. Be sure to subscribe so you never miss an episode. Living well and shining on what you're about. Eating well is loving from the inside out. So take your time and love yourself. Take your plans off of the shelves for all you love with all that you do. Don't forget to love you too.